Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I want to show you how to play Dice Stars, a simple little roll and write game designed by Bruno Cathala and Ludovic Moblock. Like many roll and writes, Dice Stars is super easy to set up. All you need is a score sheet and a bag of dice. And as you're going to discover, these dice sometimes have pip numbers that'll come up, and then sometimes you'll have a star side that emerges. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rolling dice from this bag, we're going to be choosing each round dice based on one of their attributes. So I can either choose dice for their color. So the color options are black, purple, blue, and gold. All of these dice will be orange. We're just going to ignore that. Um, I can choose dice for their number. So two through five, or I can choose dice that have stars on them and mark off multipliers over here. And we're going to talk through what those different choices mean as we go. Um, this is equally true of the multiplayer game, but in the solo, the difference is that I am playing against this timer down here, and this is my opponent. If all of these boxes fill up, the game will end. So I can end the game by filling all of these boxes. If I don't get that done fast enough, the game will end for me because this track down here will fill. I can also end the game by having to take a penalty. So the way that, that would happen would be if we're getting towards the end and I roll dice and I can't take any of them to play. If that happens, then the value of that die becomes a penalty that subtracts from your total score. The rules for dice stars can be just a little bit abstract. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start playing and talk you through what I'm doing as I go. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw three dice from this bag because if the reserve of dice is empty, because you don't, you don't necessarily pick up all the dice on a turn. So the reserve is empty. You have to draw and roll three dice. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here are three dice. One blue, one gold, one purple. Let's roll them and see what we get. All right, so we have a blue six, a purple two, and a gold three. So the way this game works is that... <clears throat> When you take dice, you have to take all the dice of a color or all the dice of a number, if that's what you choose. However, in this particular situation, um, I have three different colors and three different numbers. So I'm going to only end up taking one die and I'm gonna have to choose to do it by color or by number. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this blue six. That's gonna go in the discard over here. And I am going to mark a six right here because I took it for the number. So I'm going to write the total of the dice that I scored right here. Um, if I had picked up two dice that were sixes, I would have put an X here and a 12 here to represent the sum of the dice. So now I have dice in my reserve and I get to choose how many dice to pull out of the bag. I could pick one, two, or three. But we also actually have to mark the turn counter for our, uh, our solo dummy opponent. So these dice set up to five. For every set of five or start on the next set of five, you have to mark one box down here at the end of your turn. So we're going to just mark off one box. If this had been a total of six pips, we would have had to mark off two boxes because it would have been one set of five and then the start of another set of five. Um, so we're just going to mark off one box for now. But I don't want there to be too many dice accumulating in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull one from the bag. Okay, so this time we got a black die. Let's see what we roll. A two. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to go ahead and grab both of the twos, and I'm going to take them for their number. So I've taken two twos, and the way that it's going to work is I'm going to put one X here, and then I'm going to put the total of the two dice here in this box, which is four. So... That is what happens when you take more than one die of a color or number. Um, as you can see, the twos also have the most overflow spaces. These green spaces are overflow. So they can be nice to have towards the end of the game because it lets you kind of keep pushing these rows and uh, their scores. But I can only ever play four sixes in the entire game. So I have to be careful about filling those spots and when I do it. All right, so let's go ahead and draw two dice this time. Kind of keep this reserve. Oh wait, and also I had this three right here. So three is less than five but it's still a partial set of five, so we're gonna just X off one box. All right, now we're gonna draw our two dice. All right, so we have a orange and a purple. So we got a purple four, I mean a orange four, and a purple two. So I think what I'm gonna do is grab these two oranges. This time I've taken them for their color. So the way that's going to work is I'm gonna to go to the gold column right here. I'm gonna put an X, and then I'm gonna put their pip total which is seven. 
And then again, we're under five, so I'm just gonna put an X right here. So we're doing okay against the timer right now. All right, so I'm gonna draw two more dice from the bag. Okay, so this time I got a gold and a blue, orange and a blue. Ooh, and I got a couple sixes. Hmm, okay. I think what I'm gonna do this time is even though it risks filling up these six, the six row, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna take these sixes. And what that means is now when I write on my score tracker, I'm gonna put X and then 12. I'm gonna get some stars here so I can show you what they do. And again, we're just at a two, so we're just gonna X off one box. So our discard pile over here is getting a little bit big. We are going to have to um, add some dice back to the bag soon. Let's go ahead and take two. All right, so now we have a four, a two, and a star. This is the first star that you've seen in this game. So now is a good moment to talk about what the stars do. These stars are essentially a multiplier, and the way that they're gonna work is at the time that I choose to take something for its star value, I will be putting the number of dice with stars on them that I have, and I'll be filling in a number of squares that relates to that number. So if I took one star now, I could put an X in any one of these boxes. The thing is that dice are a risk. They can be a fantastic score multiplier if you fill up the entire row with stars. If you fail to fill up the entire row with stars, then that entire row is worth nothing. So if I start working on this six row, I need to get six whole stars in there. If I do it, I can get double the score for the row, which would be awesome. However, if I fail to do it, then I would get zero points for the row, no matter how many I had actually in this like white scoring section. That would be terrible. So the way this is going to work is that um, I'm gonna go ahead and take these two purples. I'm gonna put them over here and I'm gonna take them as purple. So that means I'm gonna put X six. And that will be my scoring part. And then I have a star left here. In the timer rules, basically if there's only stars left, you just fill in one box, no matter how many stars there are. So we've actually been okay on timing. If I had taken the star and left the six, I would have had to fill in two boxes for one set of five and then the sixth. Um, if I had had something like this in here still in my reserve, what happens is if this were my reserve left at the end of the turn, no matter how many stars there are, you actually have to double the pip count. So instead of a three, I would count this as a six and still have to fill in two boxes down here. So that is how the star works with the timer. So we're gonna leave the star. Let's pull out another two dice. Yeah, let's do that. Ooh, okay, so now we have all stars, which leaves us with an interesting choice. I would like to take these stars. Um, the question is, where do I want to put them? Because this would be a really nice row to double. I just don't want to not have the chance to do it. But hey, no risk, no reward. We're gonna go ahead and grab these stars. And we're gonna fill in these three boxes in hopes of getting three more stars to complete the task at some point during this game. The other thing is that that has left our reserve empty. So we don't fill in any boxes on the timer this turn, which is great. Um, the other thing that happens when you take stars is that all of your discarded dice go back in the bag. So everything goes back to the bag. You also have the option of choosing to put everything in the reserve back in the bag if that's what you want. But now that I've done that, I have to draw three dice next turn, which means I could end up with a high pip count, which is definitely going to happen. So let's see, what would I like to do? I don't want to take this for a purple because I'm already running out of space in this purple row. I could take it as a five. Uh, I could do a black three here, or I can just fill up the six row. You know what, I'm gonna be risky. I'm gonna take the six out, and I'm gonna put a six right here. We're gonna do that as a six. That leaves us with eight pips left in the um, reserve. So we're gonna have to fill out two of these timer boxes. And now let's pull out another, let's say one die. All right, we got a blue. Oh, it is a star. Okay, I'm gonna take this purple out. And I'm gonna score it, however, as a five. I'm not gonna take it as a purple number. I'm gonna take it, I mean, purple color, I'm gonna take it as a five number. So I'm gonna put the five right here. And we have a star and a three left. So the fact there's a star in my reserve means that this counts not as three, but as six. So I'll have to fill out two timer boxes, which is unfortunate. Let's pull another two dice and see if I get something good. All right, another black and a four. Ew, okay. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna play the risky game here. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I can't take any more sixes. You might have noticed. So I cannot take these as the value for six. I can, however, fill up the black column. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these two dice out. So I'll have a six and a three, four, eight points. And this is going to be a whopping 12. So I have to fill in one, two, three blocks on there for five, 10. And then the answer two starts another set of five. Bummer. All right, so let's pull out a couple more dice and see what happens. Ugh, why am I rolling so high? This is really bad. Okay, so here's what I might do. I'm going to go ahead. I don't want to deal with all this time running out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the star for its star value. So I'm going to take that, put it in discard. I'm going to put it here because I'm trying to double this row. That would be very nice point wise. According to the rules, that means that I put all of the discard pile back in the bag. It also means that I may put all dice from the reserve back into the bag. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I can keep this timer from it not from going up anymore. That's what I'm going to do. Of course, now I have to draw three dice from the bag. Okay, so I have a four, a five, and a three. What will I do with this? All right, I think what I'm going to go ahead and do... Ugh. All right, I'm going to... I have a lot of number spaces left, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the blue five. I'm going to put it here as a five because I feel like that's point wise a good thing. And then this is seven. So I'm going to X off two little spots. Let's grab two more dice and hope I get something good. Ah, this is actually fantastic. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take all three of these threes. So it's going to be X, X, nine. That was good. And then with only four, I only have to block off one spot. So as you can see, things are starting to get down to the line for me here. I need to get those stars. So let's roll two dice and hope it happens. Ugh, no. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take another five. That was a five. So we're going to put that here. Six. We'll make me mark off two. Come on, stars. I need you. Okay, so I have an option here. All right, I think what I'm going to do is I can wait another star. I'm going to take these two fours for X and then eight. Two times two is still four. So I just mark off one square. So that seemed like a good plan to me. And now let's pull out two more dice. I'm still hoping for that second star so I can complete this row. That'd be amazing. And it's still not happening. Crap. Okay, um, I'm going to take this black five for another five. Basically, I can end the game if I put something either a blue or a two here. I don't really want to do that yet because I will lose all these points and that would really stink. Um, so this is going to be two spots marked off. Let's go for these stars here. Oh, yes. Okay, awesome. So the good thing is I don't really want any of those anyway. I'm going to take these two for their star value. I'm going to complete this row. I'm going to choose to empty the reserve as well and put everything back in the bag. Of course, now I have to draw three dice from the bag, which is unfortunate. Oof. All right, well, this is unpleasant. Um, I'm going to grab this orange five for the five value and put that here. So now my five rows full. I have to do three spots on this timer. Oh God. And then I'm just gonna take one die. A six, seriously? All right, so this is where we're in sort of an unfortunate spot because I can't take a black six. I can't take a gold six. I can only take a star, which means that I'm gonna lose points in one of my rows. This is gonna be the row that I'm just gonna lose on. So I'm gonna take this star. I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna put everything back in the bag, but the game's not over yet because I haven't filled this block or taken a penalty. So the timer doesn't advance this turn, but I have to roll three dice here and we'll see how it does. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna take this blue three as a blue. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and end the game. But I'm pretty sure that this guy still gets to have his like turn. So according to the normal rules, all players get the same number of turns. So I think that he also gets to fill in three more blocks. And that is the end of the game. Oof. Okay, so each of these spaces is worth five points for the bad guy. So let's see how he ended up doing. All right, so I think he's going to get me. He's sitting here pretty at 130 points. Woof. All right, so let's see how I ended up doing. So this row, because I have one star thing blocked off, but not both, I get nothing for this row, which totally sucks. For this row, 9 and 7 is 16. I'm not going to get any doubling here. Um, here we go, 8, 8, 16, so this will be 22. This will be all fives, 25. And here I managed to get 12, 18, 24, but because I filled this up, it's 24 times two, which means this row is worth 48. So now I add all these up and that will be my total score. Yeah, so that's only 100. And 11. So he got me 130 to 111. If I could have just gotten more stars, I could have doubled more stuff. No, but yes, this is Dice Stars. It's relatively simple. Um, it's a quick little roll and write. And uh, if you're just looking for something fun to do solo, it is not a bad choice. So I hope that you enjoyed this little tutorial and happy gaming.